G'day guys, welcome and welcome back, whatever it may be for you, to the Full Driving Mates YouTube channel. Today we're going to see if you need a long range fuel tank. So come along and join us as we install a Brown Davis 175 litre sub tank. And at the end of the video, we'll go through the pros and cons and try and help you decide whether you need a long range fuel tank or not. Enjoy, please remember to like, share, subscribe. scratches and stuff on top. I'm gonna have to give this another coat of paint because it'll definitely get rust on there easy. Kit has been checked. We'll break that seal. Ordered long range sub tank replacement the live axle and this is it's, there's no date on there but it was packed and checked I guess so they've uh, put their lines through there that's how they've picked the order so hopefully it's all here and all true and correct patchy sort of looking job um, anyway so he said oh they got a new painter and a painter at the moment and um, they gave a word to him about the paint jobs going out so this is just one tank I'm I'm hoping for anyone else that's brought a tank uh, just recently that theirs is uh, painted correctly and this is pretty disappointing uh, hopefully you can see that there there's uh, so I'll put a light on it that's um, not painted. This is just a, a one-off, I'm sure. They seem to have a reasonable reputation, Brown Davis. That's why I went and purchased a Brown Davis tank. It's because of their, um, their reputation. Uh, it's rubbed through already. That could have been me or something. It's actually rubbed through. Probably a good idea for them to, I don't know, you pack it with some cardboard or something as well. They're, uh, well, they're welds, I guess, yeah. They certainly uh, wouldn't win any awards, I don't think. They're not very pretty. <laughs> yeah, pretty rough. Almost looks like it was done with a gasless uh, MIG, some of it, eh? This is the fill point, and this is at the uh, fast fill breather. They've got a boss welder in. I don't know why they haven't got a bit of pipe uh, like that. Anyway, they supply a barb. It's not a push fitting, it's clearly a threaded fitting. Just another thing that they've supplied wrong. If you come across this because they've got, you know, quality control of a $2 watt fa watch factory, it seems, when it comes to packing orders and checking off products before they go out, you can use any brand you want. This is just what their local auto parts store had. So it's 5.8 hose, that's so the same size hose, but it's a 3.8 BSP. I think they've supplied a quarter inch. So, theirs is, and the one I brought, straight in. Now I'm also using a straight one, because when the hose is on, it's an easy bit of angle. It's not that big a deal. It's an easy angle for it to go to, where the tr this up like this, that's just ridiculous, and it sits really high, and it, surely that's probably gonna hit something in the back of the car too, eh? So that's just, yeah, it's just the wrong part altogether. So, um, yeah, I don't know why I couldn't just put a bit of pipe on here. Just, yeah, uh, it's uh, mind boggling stuff. The extended float, new fuel pump fitted, new bit of hose, new filter on the fuel pump. Also, went ahead and got new gaskets. 
for here and for the for that and also decided to grab new hoses as well because the original ones are obviously always old and hard I wasn't sure on the exact size because I hadn't measured them and I just thought I'd go with something that works and is fit to the right length and um, I think buying them genuine is probably cheaper than going to a hose place and could be probably a minimum meter So after all the mucking around, I've got that in, had the swap filters on it and I had to bend up the, the base of the motor holder where the rubber sits because to try and lift everything up a bit because it was fouling in the bottom of the tank. So this is probably about oh, one or two mil too low and I did contemplate putting the old gasket on top of the new gasket to get a bit of depth to lift it a bit but the screws wouldn't be long enough and everything just, you know, you don't want too thick a joint gaskets and a used one and it's not a good idea, probably long term. So I just bent that up a bit and it, I, I can't see in the tank right now, but if I could, I'm pretty sure the uh, this is sitting right on the actual tank, like firmly, which I'm not pleased about. Um, so that's in, the sender's in and it doesn't hit the bottom of the tank, hopefully it's low enough or high enough, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, sat against the side of the tank and look perfect with the thickness of this as well, you got to compensate for when you're checking it against the side. We've put the correct barb in, I've had to go buy the uh, straight barb with the 338 three BSP thread, not whatever they supplied, which looks like a quarter BSP. Alright, so now we're about to get ready to put it in. So these are the two mounting points to the front and you'll see the plane across the back's got three and that's it. Anyway, I think that's about where it needs to go. It's hard to be exact, I guess, because there's no measurements. It's all guesswork, really. It's in, so utilizes these factory mounting holes here. Now what normally goes across here is this bar that is a support I believe for the factory spare tire. So you bolt this mount in the lower side down. Now what do I mean the lower side down with the tubing? Let's stick this here. There we go. This plate, you'll see that the, the, the flat bar they've used here with this box section, this is only maybe 10mm, 
the other side might be 20 mil so the box section is the lowest possible point down in a way um, and I've just put that flush with the back of the chassis bit there sort of on the end for the actual plate and then you've once you've got that sitting in I use some G clamps and I G clamped this into place and then remove the trolley jack which is what we use to lift it up with um, there you go down to the back here and there's two here and two over here now they have to be drilled in so you're drilling through the actual cross member of the chassis now there's nothing inside there that I'm aware of so you can drill through there you only have to drill through the one layer of steel unlike the box tube obviously you got to drill through both sides of it and they've all got these um, wires welded to the tops of the bolts which makes it a bit easier to get the bolts in and be uh, pretty damn fiddly if you didn't have that close to impossible especially for this one here the other one you could do but this one's a bit harder so they're in um, there's no measurements it's just sort of once you think you got it sort of plumb you drill so yeah I'm not sure about that idea but anyway it seems to be how it's always been done um, and that's how close it sits to the chassis and then it goes from the tank here you get it comes out to the new hoses I put on putting any fuel in it after you've rinsed it obviously but yeah is that you tighten up the drain plug you don't want that leaking petrol everywhere a body mount um, I'm pretty sure it's a body mount it's on top of this brace here it's within a like two or th probably three mil of the tank um, yeah it's pretty close yeah I think when it's in nice raw metal at the factory they should all come bloody wrapped aligned I don't know why they don't let's just get the negatives quickly out of the way so we can just move on a bit eh so wrong parts supplied was the brass elbow I went and got my own barb because it was the wrong size thread and the wrong shape it had the wrong installation or poor installation instructions that were very vague and misleading I think older model cruisers from my understanding the wrong bolts supplied they did send out the right bolts but how many times do you have to ring up and get every bit replaced pretty much you know it just shouldn't happen and it's very time consuming and I'm glad I did it myself this install because it would have been probably a lot more messing around and cost me a lot more if it was done at the workshop because they would have come across all these issues to have the highest standards of quality assurance for customers it's a bit rushed I think under the pump but it doesn't matter how under the pump you are you should never let a product go out that is not 100% because that is your brand or your name on it so if you have to let products go out just because you're under the pump that aren't right it speaks volumes positives the diff clearance very happy a big positive and surprise and pleasant surprise is how high the tank actually sits up I did think the tank would hang down a bit and I was expecting that but it actually sits up well above the diff height and it's actually level or a touch higher than the muffler which is just fantastic really leaves a lot of departure angle clearance so it shouldn't bang the tank as easy and that my gas tank used to hang down quite low so it's refreshing to have a tank up high and being able to have 175 litre capacity in fuel that would be fantastic as well so I'm very happy about that and everything else sort of has went together um, yeah so all right guys that's a wrap hope you've enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe share give us that thumbs up or ring the bell so you can hear the cow or the bull we'll see you in the next one good on you there we yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. It's not quite the end of the video just yet. Let's see if we can answer some questions here. Do you need a long-range fuel tank? Well, you'd be asking yourself this question, I'm guessing, if you do a lot of remote traveling or looking at doing remote traveling, long-distance touring, where getting to fuel stops within your current vehicle's fuel tank range is going to be 
getting borderline. And you want to look at the options, obviously, if it's just a one-off trip or once or twice a year. Can you just get away with carrying one or two jerry cans to get you by? If you're going to be doing regular traveling and you can't for physical reasons of yourself or your vehicle's storage solutions can't store jerry cans or can't use jerry cans, and you're going to be doing a lot more driving, then chances are you probably want to look at a long-range fuel tank as it can certainly almost double your current range of driving with your fuel capacity. But what you need to keep in mind is that the weight of a long range tank empty will average around the 50 to 60 kilo mark, which is probably around 60% to 80% heavier than some factory metal tanks. So keep that in mind. And some of the new tanks too in some four wheel drives are plastic. So they'll be lighter again. So when you add a steel tank in place of, say, a plastic tank, when it's also bigger, it's going to be increased weight. You've got to keep in mind. Now, this tank I've fitted is around 55 kilos. It's 175 litre capacity. Now, of petrol, that works out with the density variance, which is not the same as water of 1 to 1, as in 1 litre of water is 1 kilo. With petrol... 175 litres is roughly 125 kilograms. Then you throw in the weight of the tank of around about 55 kilos. You're looking up around 180 kilos of weight. Now factory, you may have only had 50 kilos of weight with the weight of your tank and the fuel. And that would have been roughly, at a guess, what these Land Cruisers were from factory with a 55 litre sub tank capacity has been increased by 120 litres plus the tank is a heck of a lot heavier so keep that in mind with your vehicle's GVM because you are probably not just fitting a tank you may have or be looking at fitting also a rear steel bar and swingaways drawers in the back of your full drive fridge fridge slide all that kind of stuff and it will add up really quick and it's not hard to put your GVM over so keep that in mind, guys. Now, plastic tanks are also available uh, for some vehicles, but as far as I know, uh, they're just for diesel, not for petrol. So ARB sell them and probably some other companies. Now, there's three main steel um, aftermarket fuel tanks, long-range fuel tanks in Australia. The main brands in them are LRA, which is Long Range Automotive. There is Long Ranger. So don't get those two confused. They're not the same. They're, they're different. And Brown Davis, which is the tank we've fitted here. Now, your average long-range steel fuel tank will start, depending on the vehicle, obviously, and its capacity of this long-range tank, will start around the $1,000 mark and go up from there. Now, that's just for the tank. That does not include installation and any other bits that may be required. So some tank installs could be $1,500, $2,000. So just keep that in mind and work that out whether it's really worth it to you or can you get away with carrying a couple of jerry cans if you're willing and able to. So they're the main sort of things to think of. Now any of the big three steel tank brands in Australia uh, normally pretty durable and they have lots of good feedback. Now every tank company and um, like any brand has had issues along the way but as they have seem to have dealt with them and they keep dealing with them and it's about the customer service they deliver and I take peace of mind in buying fuel tanks from any Australian company that has been tried and tested so hopefully this has answered your questions about whether you need a long range fuel tank or certainly given you some decent information to make an informed decision and to help you along your journey. Safe travels. Good on you, eh? Uh -huh.